Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, we're gonna do a quick, short, sharp rundown of the retinols available at The Ordinary. Anybody that's watched this channel will know I adore The Ordinary. They're a fantastic, affordable, ingredients-led, really fantastic product line. The retinols, however, are not something that I've really included in many videos, and we'll get onto that a little bit in this review. What I'm gonna do is talk about the six products which are available at The Ordinary in their retinol range. They break down into two different categories, the Gran Active Retinoid and the Retinol. We're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of each, and which are gonna work best in your skincare routine for your skin type. This could be a super long video because I've got loads to say, so I'm gonna keep it as short as possible. I'm not gonna talk a lot about retinol itself because I've actually done a whole video on retinol, which I'll link there, a 101 myth busting, how to use, how to get the most out of your retinol video. So check that out. You might wanna dip out, check that, and then come back into this video and to continue with the recommendations because that'll just explain to you everything you need to know about retinol. Today we're just going to be talking about the two different types of retinol available at The Ordinary and the different strengths within that. Let's start with this. This is the um, traditional retinol. They have three different strengths and its base is in square lane. That is in itself fantastic because retinol is inherently quite unstable when it's um, held within water or comes into contact with water. So having it in an anhydrous oil base is absolutely fantastic. I love Square Lane, it works fantastically with my skin, their cleanser is amazing, their Square Lane cleanser is gorgeous, and I just love Square Lane. So when I saw this product, I jumped at it. They do three different strengths, they do a 0.2, they do a 0.5, and they do a 1%. So let's tackle strengths first. So if you, because basically the product is all the same, it's just the concentration of retinol in each of the three is different. So if you are new to retinol, you definitely need to start on a 0.2, work your way up to the 0.5, and then assess whether you want to go to the 1% or stay at the 0.5. It very much depends on your skin type, the amount of moisture in your skin generally, and how tolerant it is to, to the product. 0.2 is really the starter point for anyone on their retinol journey. With that product, you should see reasonable results over a period of time and minimal disruption to the skin in the first six weeks. Anyone that's ever used a retinol will know the first six weeks can be rough. That's where you see the peeling, the redness, the irritation. It can become quite sore and inflame the skin. It isn't great. Basically, retinol is increasing the cell turnover, so those cells are really turning over at this point. After six weeks, whatever strength, it tends to settle down and your skin gets into a rhythm. It becomes more tolerant of the product and you, get a, you don't have the same um, issues that you have within those first six weeks. The 0.2 strength will give you reasonable results over a period of time and the six week issues will be minimal. For some people, unnoticeable. So that's fantastic if you want to enjoy a retinol but, and the benefits that retinol will give in terms of anti-aging, but don't want that downtime at the start. The 0.2 really product is for you. 0.5 is where you start if you want to start head on and you think, no, I'm just gonna battle through that first six weeks and start my retinol journey where I want to. Or for people who have progressed from a lower strength retinol and are working their way up, this product is for you. 0.5 strength will give you quite, in fact, really good results over a period of time and minimal to moderate disruption in that first six weeks. Minimal if you are very, have very thick, tolerant skin, very maybe greasy, because um, the grease will hydrate the skin to stop some of that dryness. Moderate for everybody else. When I say moderate, you are gonna get peeling, you are gonna get redness, you're gonna get increased sensitivity, and it is gonna be unpleasant. It's just not as bad as what we're coming on to. Finally, the 1%. Now, I won't ever recommend anybody start on 1% retinol. It's super strength. It's going to deliver fantastic results over a long period of time. However, that six weeks is going to be rough on your skin. Um, even for the most tolerant skin types, you're going to get real redness, real peeling, irritation, even chapping of the skin. It's just very unpleasant for that first um, six weeks. This is why I would never recommend you go for that as your first work your way up build your tolerance through to 1%. There's quite a lot of studies out there which have shown that the difference between 0.5% retinol and 1% in terms of the results on the skin are marginal and minimal. So actually, there's a little bit of me that often says to people, maybe maybe 0.5 is the right strength for you. Going to the 1% is really for people that have very 
deep set wrinkles are trying to tackle a multitude of issues and have very robust and tolerant skin i think for most people the 0.5 is the right strength for you and where you should keep your retinol game at don't always push to the one percent because you think you're going to get amazing dramatically different and improved results because actually you're not the results the difference is going to be marginal and the upset to your skin can be quite significant particularly in that first six weeks of the upgrade so i think a long and hard before stepping from 0.5 to one percent so what are the pros of these particularly three um squarely based retinols well first of all it's retinol which is great the way that retinol works in the skin is um whatever product whether it's retinol palmitate traditional retinoic acid or whatever the skin has to work through its metabolic pathways to transfer to um, transform it metabolize it into retinoic acid retinoic acid is the ingredient the skin can then use to create the extra collagen it'll boost the collagen it'll reduce the fine lines it'll resurface the skin beautiful ingredient but the skin has to turn whatever you're putting on the skin into retinoic acid the closer it is to retinoic acid when you put it on the skin the less pathways it has to go through so the potency is diminished if that makes sense this retinol is really close to retinoic acid the skin's natural um retinol source so definitely going to get that potency which is why these are very strong and i caution anyone from going straight to the one percent so the pro is it's great um in terms of its potency the price point who can argue with six pounds for a retinol like i say traditionally the retinol is the most expensive part of your skincare routine and um, you could be paying um, for the drunk elephant a passing retinol cream 75 pounds that's 100 dollars upwards if you go even bougier than that and this is just super affordable so it makes retinol accessible to everyone which i love the packaging is super clear. Their website, if you go onto their website, you can absolutely see which product you should be using the strengths. It's very honest about the downtime that you get with each strength, which a lot of companies aren't. They make out that retinol is gonna be the dream cure for our everything, but don't tell you it can be really bad for the first six weeks. And I think that's a bit shady on companies. So props to the ordinary for being upfront and saying, this is what, this is what will happen. This is what happens if you use this strength, this strength, and this strength. I really like that. I like the fact there's no water in it. That means the product is going to be stable. It's water free, which is absolutely fantastic. Now for the cons. I hate, hate, hate the texture of this product. It, it is so greasy. It's so oily. It is non-comedogenic, so you don't need to worry about it clogging the pores, but oh, it just never sinks into the skin. Um, I tried, tried, tried. I This was my go-to retinol for years because I liked the price point and I was willing to put up with the not too great um, consistency of the product for the price point. I gave up after a while. It's just, it never sinks in. It leaves the skin feeling greasy. You use it on an evening, so you're not trying to layer makeup or anything on it, which is fortunate because you couldn't. But go to sleep, you wake up, your pillow stained with the product. It just never really sinks into the skin. That issue is worse the oilier you are. I am reasonably, I have quite oily, um, greasy skin, so obviously it's going to be worse for me. People who are very dry might actually find this beneficial to have that greasiness to offset some of the dryness you're going to get from the retinol. But, oh, the consistency is just grim and it never goes in. This isn't just me. I know a number of people that have the same experience with the product and I think that is the biggest barrier to this. Um, the Ordinary also do caution against using this product. I refer people to the Gran Active Retinoid, which we're going to get onto now because they do highlight the sensitivity and the downtime that you're going to get with this, which is a very traditional old-fashioned retinol. So let's move on to the new generation of retinol, the Gran Active Retinoid now. Don't be fooled by the percentages because they do, um, well, they do th three different products within the Grand Active Retinoid. They do a square lean base with 2% and 5% and they do an emulsion 2%. So a lot of people think, wow, 2%, that's like double from what you just told us not to start with. It's not. Grand Active Retinoid is about 10% the strength of a traditional retinol. So a 5%, the 5% Grand Active Retinoid is about 0.5%, so the mid-range of the ones we've just talked about, if that makes sense. It's not an exact science, but that's a rough guide for you. So let's start with the emulsion. The emulsion is water-based, so it's a little bit more unstable, but it does sink into the skin far better than any of the other products. It's a white emulsion, milky in its consistency. It's in the 2%, they only do one strength and that's 2% and it goes straight into the skin. 
I moved to this because even though it was a lower strength than I wanted, the formulation is so much better and the delivery method so much better. It went straight into the skin. It sinks in within like 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds, sorry, and it's gone. Um, it's 2%, so it's still, it's a 0.2. It's a starter retinol, but it's really, really good formulation. It was slightly hydrating, which I enjoyed, um, particularly because I can get quite dry when I'm using retinol. And overall, a gorgeous, gorgeous product. So the retinoid, the Gran Active Retinoid Emulsion definitely a winner with me. The pros are the delivery method is gorgeous, it's hydrating, it sinks straight into the skin, the price is still fantastic. The only drawback for me is you have that one strength which is the low strength so there's nothing really to graduate onto after you first used it which I think is a shame and a missed opportunity by the ordinary but I'm not their marketing, I don't run their formula, formulary. So maybe if you're listening in the ordinary, maybe bring out some more um, strengths within that line. I, I think that would really be beneficial. Going on to the Gran Active Retinoids in Square Lean, which they do in a 2% and a 5%. Gran Active Retinoid is a new generation of retinol type um, ingredient. It's buffered and encapsulated. So what it does is it's a longer release. It's a more gentle product. You get a lot less of the redness, the irritation and the downtime that you get with a traditional retinol. The drawback is it's got to pass through more metabolic pathways to get to where your skin can actually use it, which often means that potency is diminished. There's a lot of shade going around online, particularly on YouTube, about people saying this isn't proven. The science behind this isn't proven. All of the um, scientific studies into Gran Active Retinoid have been done by the ordinary in their parent company well yes but it doesn't mean that those studies are invalid and not um telling the truth there are studies out there done by the ordinary and their parent company which show the effectiveness of the gran active retinoid and the reduction in the downtime and the side effects you get from it which is fantastic ideally these studies should be done under a multiple blind test scenario and they should be peer reviewed they haven't yet that is possibly because they haven't had the time to do that yet. This is a reasonably new product, but it shouldn't just dismiss it like that because it hasn't had the full set of studies done into it. Um, I think you can tell the difference with your skin if you use a Gran Active Retinoid. I've used one and I got the results I wanted. So that tells me that I don't need a scientific study to tell me it is working. Do I think they're as potent as traditional retinols? No, they're not. But they're never going to be because it has to cross through more metabolic pathways to get to where your skin can use it. However, you, for that, it offsets the redness, the dryness, the peeling, the irritation, which I actually think is worth it. If I was new to retinol, I certainly would start with a Gran Active Retinol. I'd start with the Emulsion, but any of these you could use. I would only really go on to traditional retinol once my skin has built up a good tolerance to it and I'm comfortable and know what I'm doing with the product. The Gran Active Retinoids in Square Lean do have the same problem as the others, which is it doesn't sink in, it sits on the skin and is quite greasy. You don't get the same level of irritation and downtime because it's in that Gran Active format. I just didn't like the consistency in the delivery method for me. And again, they were a hard pass. Now, here in the um, UK, we formerly were members of the European Union. The European Union did um, put out a decision paper that they were looking into restricting the sales of traditional retinol above 0.3%. Now, that hasn't come into play yet. Um, I doubt whether it'll come into play in the UK because obviously we've left, left the European Union, but potentially some of the stronger strengths of retinol, retinol will become prescription only. So that's something to bear in mind um, for future. I would really, of all these products, the only one I would personally recommend is the not point um, the two percent Grant Active Retinoid Emulsion. That is beautiful. It sinks in. It does exactly what it needs to do and is a good strength starter retinol. For anybody that is looking to progress their retinol journey or start on a stronger retinol. I don't think the ordinary is going to be for you. I just don't think the products sink into the skin well and work well with the skin. It's a shame because I love the ordinary and I love a lot of their products. I just don't think their retinols are the best of their product line, save for the emulsion, which I think is fantastic. So for me, if you are not looking for a 0.2% retinol, you're looking for higher, I would personally go for the Inky List, which is the equivalent of a 0.5 and um, beautiful formulation creamy hydrating goes into the skin in 20 seconds beautiful there's some other ones out there rock do a fantastic retinol and um, veen do a really good retinol there's those the roche posay have just come out with a beautiful like serum which is absolutely gorgeous i think these are all better products than the ordinary 
I don't want to throw shade on The Ordinary. I love the brand and they do some amazing, amazing products. I don't feel their retinols are there. Um, I think they need to look at the formulation, maybe ditch the square lane and look for some other um, other basis to hold the retinol in. Um, and I think you would get better results. Anyway, guys, you leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Read me to Phil. Tell me I'm totally wrong or that you've had exactly the same experience. What is your go-to retinol? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment below. Um, hopefully, you give this video a big thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Wherever in the world you are, take care. Bye.